Manoka Hani applied in a dressing on a wound has features which are quite different from other dressings. And the one important feature is that it creates a moist environment. Now, most of the modern wound dressings uh, aim to create a moist environment, but with those, the moist conditions can favour bacterial growth, and um, there are, with some of these that um, create moist conditions, there are warnings not, or advice not to use them on infected wounds because of them encouraging bacterial growth. Now, because you've got the antibacterial activity, the very broad spectrum, uh, potent antibacterial activity with Manoka honey, you, you don't get any risk of bacterial growth in those moist conditions. Um, it also means that as a dressing, it will not stick to a wound. If a dressing sticks to a wound, when you peel it off, not only is it painful, it's also ripping away all the new growth repairing that wound that gets taken away with the dressing. A honey dressing, because it draws out fluid, sits on a thin layer of dilute honey and that just can't stick um, to the wound. And then you get the features of the honey which will help with the healing process. Um, the stimulation of the growth of the cells for repair, the stimulation uh, of the white blood cells to help with clearing up um, infection. The anti-inflammatory action, which will uh, remove the f inflammation which is what stops a wound from healing, and also is what makes a wound painful. So honey will have a soothing effect on a, a painful wound when, when it's used as a dressing. Now the anti-inflammatory activity um, will stop the oozing out of fluid from a wound, the serum oozing out as a result of inflammation opening up the blood vessels. And if a suitable dressing is used which will keep the honey there and will absorb that fluid without allowing the honey to be washed out like it would get washed out of an ordinary cotton type of dressing. Uh, that will re decrease the inflammation and you will find then that you don't need to change the dressing very frequently. If you don't hold enough honey on and keep it there, if it isn't absorptive enough to handle that fluid without the honey getting flushed away, you won't decrease the inflammation in a badly inflamed wound. Uh, if the dressing is good enough to handle the fluid without the honey getting flushed away, then even on the wettest wounds, the worst cases, uh, you will find that the anti-inflammatory activity of the honey will very quickly cut down that amount of fluid coming out so that you may need to change the dressing um, once a day for the first day or two in the worst cases um, and then um, change it every maybe three days and after a week you'll probably be down to only needing to change the dressing once a week. Another way that the honey differs from other dressings is that it stops the bad smell that you get from bacterial action in a wound. When you have a wound kept moist with other dressings, it can get very smelly, but because of the action of the honey on the bacteria, uh, it stops the production of those bad smelling compounds. Now that antibacterial activity um, works on all types of bacteria which may be infected in the wound and this includes the so-called superbugs, uh, the multi-resistant uh, MRSA and the VRE, vancomycin resistant enterococci are the common ones. 
Uh, there's one that's been in the news quite a bit of late, Acinetobacter bomani, uh, another one of the superbugs that antibiotics don't work on. Um, Manuka honey will work on all of those. And a big advantage using it as a wound dressing on infected wounds is you don't need to know what the species is that's causing the infection. You don't need to get swabs and tests for antibiotic sensitivity. Because of the very broad spectrum of action of the honey, uh, it'll actually work on um, whatever the species is without you needing to know.